So let's look a little bit more at this function f of z just for fun. We'll go back to uh, integer inputs uh, soon, but if you actually just put in a general complex number f of z, uh, our definition is we have to unscale and untwist, and then it's the sign of lz. Um, and let me just write that out so that I make all these weird complex ex exponents uh, natural exponentials, so that makes them unambiguous. So this, the minus i is e to the minus pi i over 2, and then I'm raising it to the z minus 1. Uh, the 1 over i is e to the minus pi i over 2, just bringing that out. And then LZ, remember, I want to write it out explicitly in terms of complex and uh, real and complex parts. So LZ, so, sorry, IL was pi I over 2 plus ln phi, all multiplied by Z, and then similarly with a minus sign over here. So this combines to a e to the minus pi I Z over 2. That, uh, in here, that combines nicely with the plus pi i z over 2. So those cancel. So I just get e to the z ln phi here. And then here, uh, these don't cancel. They combine to be an e to the minus pi i z. And then here's the e to the minus z ln phi. Now, we can rewrite that. e to the z ln phi is just phi to the z. Um, that's just because e to the ln phi then to the z power is going to be phi to the z. Similarly here, this is phi to the minus z. And e to the minus pi i is nothing more than minus 1. So this is really a minus 1 to the z, or equivalently minus 1 to the minus z, so I can put the minus sign inside here. Okay. So what we get is basically um, Binet's formula again, but with a complex of power, which is not too surprising. So this is 1 over minus phi all to the z. So remember, that's just psi to the z. Um, and so this is a natural generalization of Binet's formula. But if you actually want to make sense of it for complex number z, or even real numbers uh, z with a minus here, a negative base, you know, taking a negative number to a fractional power is a little dicey. It already gets you into complex numbers sometimes. Um, then you really want to be careful and say, well, what I really mean by the minus to the minus z is really I mean this. And then with the phi to the minus z, you might as well be more explicit. So it's really more careful to actually write it this way. And so you could write it this way and say, okay, that's a shorthand for this expression, which is totally unambiguous. Okay. So if t happens to be real, suppose I didn't want to extend comp the, the Fibonacci sequence to complex values. I just want it to interpolate between the integers. I just want a real function. Um, that's something you can see, for example, on the Wikipedia page or the Math World page. Um, so I'm just going to write it this way, phi to the t, and I'm going to leave this guy, e to the minus pi i t, phi to the minus t. Now this is pretty unambiguous. This is a positive number to a real power. That's, that's not something weird. And then this is the only place where the exponential, where the complex numbers come in. So this is a cool way to extend Fibonacci numbers to all real arguments. 1 over root 5, phi to the t, minus, and then of course I'm just going to write this out, cosine pi t minus i sine pi t times phi to the minus t. Um, if you take the real part of that, if you don't, you really don't like complex numbers at all, you can take the real part of it. Now for the Fibonacci numbers themselves, that's not going to change anything, because this really does give you a real number. Notice when n, when t is n, an integer, sine of pi times an integer is zero. So this does die automatically. It does give you the real, the real value, the integer value. And so you could actually use this. Um, this is what you see, for example, I think both the one of the Wikipedia pages and the math, uh, the Wolfram Math World page, tell you this is uh, an extension of the um, Fibonacci sequence. It's a little ad hoc how to put the cosine pi t in there. And I feel like it's more natural to really think, no, it's actually a cosine p, pi t minus i sine pi t, because it's really e to the minus pi i t. Okay. Um, if you want to know the corresponding story for Lucas, just really quickly, it's, guess what? It's just, again, phi to the z plus minus phi to the minus c. You know, you can still, you could still write that as phi, oops, just kidding, phi to the z plus psi to the z as long as it's properly interpreted. And a be the best way is to go all the way up to here. Oh, I don't really need the parentheses there. Okay, That's an unambiguous way to define what that means, and it works for any complex number. It's pretty cool. Okay, so um, 
I don't want to make this video too long, but let's just remind ourselves, okay, I'm not even going to check this one explicitly. This, we built into the definition of L. We know that the cosine of NL and the sine of NL are the right things to make this recursion involving F and L work by construction. If you really want to do the details, go back to it. Um, but let's go ahead, if we're still a little skeptical, let's go back to the basic, basic, basic thing about Fibonacci. What about the the recursion relation for Fibonacci. So I'm going to write it as fn plus 1 minus fn minus 1. That should be fn. Okay, and so let's see. This should all reduce down to fn. All right, so what is it? 2 over root 5, that's the scaling factor. Here's the twisting to go back from the sine, which is our u sub n, to, um, to the Fibonacci. Here, because it's n plus 1, that's an n. Because that's an n minus 1, that's an n minus 2. Okay, so now I'm just going to collect out, uh, you might want to, there's another one to do on, on your own, uh, if you want to. Um, I'm going to collect, uh, I'm going to factor out a minus i of the n minus 1, because I know that's going to want to be appearing in the fn. And then that leaves one extra minus i here, in front of the sine n plus 1l. And then here, this turns into a minus i, um, just from carefully collecting the signs and everything. Okay, and now I'm just going to rewrite this. Oh, sine n plus 1 L. Yeah, we know what that does. That's sine, cosine, plus cosine, sine. Oop, it's kind of getting big. Okay, there we go. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And then, okay, I've got a factor of minus I. I factored that all out, and so this is actually going to be sine plus sine. So it's all pluses except for this one. So that cancels. I get 2 sine N L cosine L. And what do I know? I know cosine L is my minus I over 2, or is I over 2. The I cancels the minus I, the 2 cancels this guy, and I get exactly Fn. Boom. Okay. So it really does work. Okay. And I think I'm just going to skip. Um, if you want to pause it right here, you can work through this. The recursion for Ln is a very similar story. That Ln plus 1 minus Ln minus 1 is Ln. Okay, and then and in the next video, we'll go ahead and go through um, one careful version of just reversing the steps we did to create these guys. Remember, we looked at these identities that we, we knew were true or conjectured were true, and we figured out how to modify them to get sine and cosine. You just really have to kind of work that in reverse to make sure that if you define Fibonacci and Luca based on sine and cosine, that they really satisfy these beautiful identities. But it can't fail because that's why we actually did all this in the first place. Okay.